Hi everybody, this is guitar instructor Matthew Bunnell, and one of my students asked me for help to play um, the um, worship song, Good Good Father, which is in the key of G, and I'm going to be breaking this lesson up in three sections. I'm going to be breaking it up in, in section one, which I'll call as strumming, and section two will be theory, because there's three, there's three chords uh, at the very beginning. They're almost identical, but they are slightly different and it actually helps make a good sound effect. And the third part will be shapes. And that'll be referring to the left hand. So section one is gonna be referred to, to the strung pending, which will be your pick hand. <coughs> Pardon me. And the, the time signature that's written top here let me see if I get a little bit closer, is where it says six slash eight, which means six counts to the measure. I'm going to show it to you in a little bit smaller uh, increment. In other words, in three, three counts to the measure. Uh, that may be a little bit easier to follow. Okay. So as far as the, the most common strumming patterns that are occurring in the song, and I'm just going to show the pick hand first, okay, is it could be, with just counting the three in order to keep track, one rhythm could go one, two, three. Okay? So that would be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? If we want to make it more active, we could put an additional strum after count two. Which would go one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. If we wanted even more active than that, we could put the extra strum after count two, which we did already, and also put an additional strum after count three. And that strumming pattern would look and sound like this. It'd be one, two, and three. Now, I, you saw this, but I just want to remind you, when you're strumming down and up, don't dig into the strings. Just nice, nice light brush, so that way the pick is allowed to, go, to, to move up and down the strings, okay? Uh, the last rhythm, as far as being active, is where you put an extra strum after the first count. So that would be one, I'm sorry, one and two. And that would be the most common strumming patterns in a song with three counts or six counts in the measure, depending how you uh, want to count it. All right. Now, the three chords in the beginning that uh, would back up the singer would be G. The next one after that, let me just hold the page, is G sustain and G5. This is, this is going to be referred to our theory section. Now, the first chord of G, I'm going to focus on what's referred to as the third note of the chord, okay? So in the key of G, let me scoot this back just a little bit so you can see my hands just a little better. All right? So our third note in a G major scale, as a reference, G's the first note, A's the second note, and B's the third note. So, when we play our G chord, and I'll show you fingering in a moment, okay? So, we want to make sure in this example that we let our pick hand run right through the second string where open B would be. The second chord, which is called G sustain, the sustain will refer to the fourth note of the scale. So, if B is the third note, G, A, B, 1, 2, 3, C would be the fourth. And, the, and so the sustain chord that comes after G, this would be the G chord, the sustain, and then the third chord, which is called G5. Let me back up a moment for a review. G is the first, A is the second, B is the third, that was in our first chord, C is the fourth, that was in our second or sustain chord, 
and D is our fifth. So B, C, and D are all on the second string. That's one way to play it. And so it could be played like this, all right? It could be G, sustain, and fifth. Let me play that again. Open B, sustain. Now, there's a couple different fingerings for the fretboard hand to, to do, okay? Now, the example I'm showing is what my student's trying to do. He's going to keep a pinky on high G, and he's going to keep a middle finger way over on string six. Now, that gives him two spare fingers. Which two spare fingers are needed? It's just in order to play that sustain chord, he'll need to tilt the wrist just a little bit. Just make sure he gets all the way back on fret one, okay? So just as a reminder, sustain, G5. Now, another fingering that could be done that might be a little bit easier on the fretboard hand, okay, is, is we can go, we could still go with the open B for G chord. Point finger for the G sustain, and this and this time we're going to let the pinky move over to the second string. Now, if you're listening, you don't hear that high G on the first string, but the fingering is a little bit easier. Now, to make sure that the first string doesn't come out, you would need to either. Shorten your strum on your pick hand. You might consider muting the first string with some spare fingers. And because you don't hear the high G on the first string, it's got a little bit of lower pitch. Maybe it'd be considered as like a mid-range sound, okay? So that would be the theory that helps get those first three chords that all are marked with G, but there's a different passing note. And that gives enough movement while sustaining the bass note. Now the chords will have, I'll go a little bit further in the song, okay? So we got G. will have pinky on string one, ring on string two, and the middle way over on string five, muffling four. And then we go G to B, which on that fifth string we're just moving from C down to B. A minor seven, which is pinky right there, still on the first string, point finger on the second string, third string open, and the middle reaching over string four, and string five is played open. That's our A minor seven. And then our final chord for the verse section will be D four, which will be pinky once again. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention the pinky a little more in just a moment. Pinky stays on first string. Ring's gonna be on second string. They're both, they're both sharing fret three. And the point finger is gonna be playing on string two, three, pardon me, fret two with open D. Now, I'm going to play the whole, the whole verse section, and I'm going to keep my pinky on G because all the chords contain it. Now, it takes a little bit of stretch to do it, but if you want the sound effect of the high G and the open G, like on a third string of a 12-string guitar, where you got that big octave sound, that could be very desirable as well as possible to do. So I'm going to read through the chords of the verse, and we go G, sustain, and 5. Here, 
one thing he stays on death, I know she too. She came under seven. still here on the first string ring finger still um, pressing down on the second strings sharing the third fret third strings open and the point fingers reaching over this time to string four fret two and that'll be your e minor seven so the fingerings are very similar let me play the bridge and we'll close this up okay so we got c2 e minor seven see how similar a minor seven E minor 7, E4, and we'll go back to chorus, C2, G, A minor 7, E4, and G, A minor 7, Time we'll go back to the first G sustain five G sustain five G sustain five G sustain and five. And we'll, leave, and we'll cut it off for right there. Okay. If the, you found this helpful. Give me a response. I'll have this posted on my Facebook, uh, no, pardon me, my YouTube page under Matthew Bono. And um, if there's anything else I could help you with as far as worship songs or some beginning or intermediate guitar uh, steps, I'll be glad to help you. Thank you.